Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. Hey, this is Big Chief, and you're listening to The Bourbon Road. You know what I love to pour in my old fashions is a little maple syrup. Can't be just any maple syrup. It has to be from seldom seen farms up in Ohio. He takes bourbon barrels, pours his syrup in there, and ages it for six to nine months, making for some delicious, just some delicious syrup that you could pour on pancakes, you could pour it on waffles, chicken and waffles like this fat guy likes, but seriously, you want to make a delicious cocktail with some maple syrup and not that old simple syrup, check out SeldomSeenMaple.com, pick up some stuff from there today, we'd appreciate it. Hey everybody, I'm Jim Shannon. And I'm Mike Hyatt. This is The Bourbon Road. And today, Mike, we're doing what we promised, which is we're bringing on a few bottles. We're going to talk about them. We're going to sort of go through the aging of a bourbon. Yeah, so what we have is the Calumet Farms series. We got the 14, the 15, and the 16 year. Um, and we're going to drink starting with a 14, and we're going to work our way up to the 16 and kind of talk about that nuance of the change of barrel maturation really because I, I i think we felt like this was kind of a necessary thing to do after we had the 16 on we had previously had the 15 and the 14 on at one time or another yeah we had the 16 on we kind of felt like eh, it might be it might be hitting the end of its lifetime right yeah and we thought well maybe the best thing to do is get on and try these three bourbons talk about them and see if that progression sort of happened during that period of time yeah and the first one like i said we're drinking is the calumet farm uh, 14 year now if people don't know where calumet farm is it is actually a thoroughbred farm over near lexington kind of paris kentucky right too uh i'm not sure exactly where it is but definitely in horse country kentucky lexington and areas north yeah I think it is. It's right there between the Lexington and Paris, uh, not Paris, Tennessee, but Paris, Kentucky. Yeah. I used to get those two mixed up for some reason. I don't know why, but um, Paris, Tennessee has a giant Eiffel Tower, uh, one third the size. Uh, but Paris, Kentucky don't have that big of one. I don't think they do. They have an Eiffel Tower in Paris. They, they do have a little Eiffel Tower. Being is it in the river? No, no, no. It's just it's just in the town. It got a little. Yeah. Little little bitty one. <laughs> like how big is it? I think it's like eight foot tall, maybe. <laughs> it's not big. I mean, but the one in Paris, Tennessee is it's big. It's pretty big. It's one third the size. Oh. Well the one in, in Paris, France is smaller than the one in New York City, too. Yeah, it's a little brother. There's a there's an Eiffel Tower and Well, you know the the Eiffel Oh, not the Eiffel Tower. I'm sorry. You're I was talking about, about Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> hell? Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> folks, we have had a cup. We have been drinking a few bourbons here. <laughs> I was thinking the one, and there's one in Las Vegas. I thought the one in Las Vegas, the Eiffel Tower there, uh, was almost as big as the one in Paris, but I don't think it is. Uh, the one in Paris. I've climbed the one in Paris. You climbed up that thing? The I stairs? Been, I have been up it. Yeah, I had to walk up the stairs because the elevator was shut down when I was there. How old were you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've been up it more than once. Um, probably 30s? I don't know. Oh, you haven't been up it recently? I No, I haven't been up it in 20 plus years. I'd freaking die. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd climb it today. But That's a quite a feet right there heck yeah i did climb it actually actually i was quite upset because the elevators were out and that was the only way you could get up to servation level was to to climb the stairs it's quite it's quite a climb i had to skip that i've been like nope (laughs) you mean you had to pay them to climb up there no i don't think you pay to climb up i think you pay to ride the elevator but the elevator was down that day so for repairs or something that's that's but i've been up more than once but yeah that's horse crap. It's quite a view from up there. It's really nice. And speaking of horses, <laughs> back to our episode, Calumet Farms. Um, you know, we've we've reviewed all three of these, Jim, and uh, we liked all three of them. But yeah. we felt like it kind of progressed 
to a more oaky, you know, overaged bourbon. Yeah, I think I think our idea was is that I think it had reached a point where they probably should go ahead and bottle it, be done with it. Yeah. But maybe they got a bigger plan than that, or maybe they're almost out of bottles. Who knows? I mean, I don't know what they're... This is Western Spirits out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah. They have a couple of other uh, expressions that they that they uh, manage. Uh, one would be the uh, Sam Houston, which we both liked. Right? I liked it, but I didn't like it because that damn Sam Houston on there should have a Texas bourbon in there. <laughs> well, I think it's kind of the same, similar barrels, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, similar barrels. The um, then they have the Lexington bourbon, mm-hmm. uh, which is not from Lexington. It's just called Lexington. And then they got Bird Dog. I've never actually had a bottle of Bird Dog. Have you? I think I have, and I, I can't say that I liked it. Yeah, I've, 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 I've not had it myself. I've heard. I think that. Um, well, I shouldn't say anything unless I try it myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, nevertheless, those are the things out of Western Spirits, out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is one of them. The Calumet series has, has gotten a lot of attention, I think, on the shelves. It's a, kind of an expensive bottle, um, 150-ish. Yeah, it's it's up there. I, I think, you know, you can see all three of these on the shelf right now from 119 up to, to 150. Okay. Just I'll, depends on where you're at. Yeah, where you're at and... You know which bottle it is and stuff like that, but they have all three of them at Kroger right now. Um, I think in most Krogers I've seen them, and they're they're cheaper. You know, one nineteen, one twenty, one thirty. So if you're looking to steal a bottle, yeah. All right, so we're drinking the fourteen, and uh, it's in our glass. Let's check it it's out. It's good. All right, this is the Calumet Farms fourteen year old. It's rich. <clears throat> That's rich and butterscotch. I already drank it. <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit of quite a bit of oak on that though. But it does have a little bit of a, a kind of a fruit note, but it's a dark fruit. A little dry though. It is. That's what I was trying to sit here thinking how it hit my palate. Um, now, this this mash bill, 74% corn, 18% rye, and 8% malted barley. Um, not bad. This is a 96.2 proof. So, you know, when I drink this, I get a kind of a overwhelming coolness from it. And that's that. maybe that is that drying effect. Yeah, I think it is a bit drying. So this is reportedly out of the Barton Distillery, Barton 1792 Distillery. Whether or not it's some of the barrels that were part of the collapse or not, who knows. But a lot of 11 and a half year old barrels ended up coming out of that um, mayhem. And after you had to say that, I'm getting my peanuts and Dr. Pepper. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's just that, that tingly spice of Dr. Pepper and the nuttiness from a Barton, uh, you know, juice. It seems like I always get that. Um, but it's still at 96 proof. This probably could have been proofed up a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I tend to agree with you there. I, I would tend to go a little p- more peppery, I think. Uh, and it does have a little bit of a pepper note to it, but it's dry. Let me ask you this. You're, you're a science guy. If a whiskey is super oily, right? Yeah. And you add water to it. Yeah. Why doesn't the water separate from the whiskey? Well, I don't think oily necessarily means oil. Well, there's oils in there, right? I would say, yeah, there are some oils in there, but I think a lot of that has to do with probably things more more like uh, fatty acids, Mm. things like that. I don't think they're particularly oils that would separate from water. There's just things that add body to the whiskey. Wouldn't the, if it did separate, wouldn't the oil or the water go to the bottom of the bottle? Well, I mean, water would be heavier than oil typically. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But I don't think we're talking about oils here. I think we're talking <laughs> about uh, fatty acid esters and things along those lines, which are a little bit different. I feel like I'm an eighth grade science <laughs> question. <laughs> Technically, it can't separate. I don't think it's going to separate. Now, I think what happens is, uh, in the case of non-chill filtered whiskeys, 
when they reach extreme cold temperatures, then some of those components can, what they call flocking, they flock out. They turn into this cloudiness in the bottle. Yeah, you'll see, sometimes you'll see this white chunks in your bottle, and that's what yeah, that is. Yeah, it's flocking. So, yeah, yeah that, that can happen. And I think that is solubility. I, I think under normal temperature and pressure conditions, they're probably soluble in water. But once the temperature hits a low enough number, that solubility is not there, and it just comes out of solution. So, hmm. Yeah. I mean, a lot of companies, I mean, that's why they chill filter, right, is to make sure that that doesn't happen. If a, if a bourbon gets cold, they don't want that, that material to come out of solution. Yeah, I think uh, if the non-typical whiskey nerd, right, somebody just as enjoys their whiskey in a, let's say, a, a Jack and Coke or something like that, you know, they see some white stuff floating around in their whiskey, it's going to bother them. They're going to worry about it a little bit. And you, so yeah. sometimes you get black stuff floating around, right? Which is the the char out of the yeah, barrel. Yeah, I can understand that. But some white stuff, I might think there's worms in my whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, I want no worms in my whiskey. <laughs> but you can see how a new whiskey drinker, somebody that's not drinking whiskey every day and don't understand it, how that that white stuff floating around there is going to – it would bother me. Yeah. And I've, I've got a couple bottles that has some of that in there. Um, and we had reached out and said, hey, uh, what's going on here? Um, but great explanation of that and great explanation of, you know, uh, water and whiskey and how they um, go together and why they don't separate. You know, I don't I don't think we ever talk about that, that science stuff sometimes. Yeah, we, we, we usually let – Whatever experts on our show talk about well, it a little you're bit. You're the expert today. <laughs> you got an expert in the room. Well, Jim, I it, this 14 year, it, it, you know, it, it was good whiskey, no doubt. Um, like I said, I think they missed the mark on the proof. If it was north of of a hundred, you know, hundred hundred and three, hundred and five, that would have been a fine uh, yeah. expression. I th- I think. Well, at least with the 14-year-old, I don't feel like we're at a stage where this is over-oaked, spent too long in the barrel. Oh, no. I think it's definitely drying at this point. It's definitely, it's a it's a bit bold, but it still has those, those few fruity notes, that caramel, the vanilla, the nice bourbon notes that you expect to get. And uh, it's, it's quite enjoyable at 14 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's move on to that 15-year. All right, let's do it. We got this 15 year poor Jim and same color. Yeah. Not much difference, right? So they didn't they didn't play with the the proofs on these at all or anything? Yeah. So this proof right here is a hundred and five proof. Okay. So we're 15. up in proof a little bit. Yeah. Well, so they listened to the public. Yeah, I think we had said that too. <laughs> we like probably to had, I think we had it on the show and they probably talked about it. Yeah. And I and I would like to go back and maybe look at our previous review of the 14 and see how close we were we're not always spot on the second time around no i, I mean, mean i ever it could be different every time because you know we talked about that in the past um somebody says hey what what's your review of this and i always got to go back and look and say I, I, I can't remember we've drank so damn many whiskeys that i can't sometimes remember yesterday's whiskey um, and tonight we had some pretty awesome french dip sandwiches yeah and they had some, uh, what kind of peppers were on those? Pepper ch- Pepperoncinis. And, uh, you know, that affects your palate. Yeah, I'd ate a, a, like a tangerine before we started. To, I thought that would cleanse my palate yeah. and take some of that spice out of my tongue. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if it did or not. But whatever you're eating, whatever you're drinking, you know, your mood that day, how much rest you've had uh, can change your palate. Um you think your palate's the same every day? I got some candles going in the house. We know from Ashley Barnes that can mess around with your taste buds and your Yeah, if Ashley Barnes sniffer. is coming to your house, you have to put out your candles. Put out your candles. So you don't Open want no the candles. Windows, let, that, let that get through there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're drinking the 15-year-old Calumet Farm. This is a, You said this time it's around 105 proof? Yep. And uh, so this is up in proof a little bit from the last time, but it's the same barrels that have aged a year longer. Let's see what we think about it. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, you can tell that by the nose. You can tell that's the same whiskey. A little more oakier this time. Obviously, yeah. that extra year here in Kentucky, you know, is going to have an effect on it. Yeah, for me, it's uh, definitely starting starting to get a little bit more of that pucker factor on the back of the palate, a little more drying. But the same 
uh, sort of mid palate notes here of uh, sort of that deep caramel, that dark fruit, a little bit of spice kind of on the edge of pepper. It's definitely got that bold spice to it. Um, you know, bold pepper, you know, almost like it's fresh cracked pepper on a Caesar salad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I still like this at 15 years. You know, I'm still getting my Dr. Pepper and peanuts though with this. You know, you you get that spice of Dr. Pepper and the peanuts from <clears throat> we think Barton 1792 there. A nice bourbon. Um that that spice is hanging on though. Yeah. I still like it. Um in fact, I might even say that this has uh changed enough from the 14 year, but it's changed in a way that I kind of Kind of like it. I, I I could see that it's reaching a very dry, oaky point, but I still, I kind of like it a little bit better than the 14. Yeah, I, I think we had said that too, that this was a, <clears throat> a, a fits our palates a little bit better. It's probably the extra proof. Do mm-hmm. you think? I, I think so. I think maybe that just that year, year, they found that sweet spot in there in this 15 year and, you know, the 14 I'm not saying it was watered down, but it, you know, that's why I asked that question about can whiskey and water separate over time in the bottle? Yeah. Um, you know, that always made, I wonder about those kind of things. Now this has been sat down on my shelf for, I guess a year, year and a half now. So, um, but still great whiskey. Um, I really like it for the price point. It's still great. You know, you can pick one of these up for less than 150 bucks all day long. Yeah. So we're talking, uh, so the general rule on whiskeys is $10 per year of age. Yep. So we're looking at a 15 year whiskey here. So you would think 150 bucks would be the price. I think you get it for 129, 129. Yeah. Okay. So not a great bargain, but a mild bargain, right? Yeah. I mean, Hey, you, if you're spinning up, that 130 range, you know, it's, that's not bad for a 15-year-old whiskey. And it's still coming out of, a, we know this is coming out of Barton. So this is still quality whiskey coming out of a quality distillery run by Sazerac. You know, it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's sip on this for a while, Jim. Let's do it. Uh, on our break. And listeners, hang with us. We'll be right back. Um, and then we're going to go ahead. We'll, we'll finish this up right here. And then we'll talk about the 16-year-old. And then maybe after we finish that 16 and we're done with it, maybe we'll go back and taste a, an eight-year-old. Yeah, there is an eight-year-old. There is an eight-year-old. <laughs> now, it's shelf. not the same whiskey. Yeah. But it is the same. It's eight years label. old, though. It's, it's eight years old. Just go back and taste it see what it's like. Yeah. All right. Man, Jim, you know what I've really been enjoying lately? Oh, you're going to tell me. Some of that seldom seen farms maple syrup that's been aged in bourbon barrels. It is absolutely delicious, not only in a cocktail, but you can cook with it, right? You can. You absolutely can. Now, Mike, Kevin just sent me a new shipment, so I got a little bit more. And I've been making some beef jerky lately. Really? Yeah. Now, I know you're the meat master, (laughs) (laughs) but but I I tried my hand at it. I said, you know, I'm going to make some beef jerky, and I've got a pretty decent beef jerky recipe, and it's got a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of Worcestershire, a little bit of, you know, onion powder, garlic powder, those kind of things. But I always put brown sugar in it. Well, this time, Kevin sent me a bottle of his granulated maple sugar. Wow. And I decided that I was going to substitute the maple sugar for the brown sugar. Oh, game changer. Let me tell you. Total game changer. Total game changer. Some of the best beef jerky you've ever had. So I'm going to make another batch here in in about a week, and I'll be sure to get you some. Man, that that sounds delicious. Vivian took, and we just got an air fryer like most people got these days, right? And uh, she took and soaked fresh pineapple in that maple syrup and then put it in the air fryer and it kind of crisp up a little bit. Oh, sounds Uh, good. It was just magically delicious. Um, And people probably wonder why we love it so much. Kevin competed in the maple festival uh, last year, 2021. 
and he was named Grand Champion. Uh, that's saying something. So Seldom Seen Farms, Grand Champion of the 2021 Maple Surf Festival. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's saying something. Yeah. You're going up against some heavy hitters in maple syrup. And I know we're we're talking about just the syrup, but um, you know, that's something to be proud of. Uh hats off to you, Kevin, for winning that. Kevin's also uh competing in a couple of other competitions. Make sure you check out his website. Check out his social media on Instagram and Facebook. You won't be uh disappointed. If you want to buy something from him, where can they go, Jim? You can go to seldom seen maple.com. And Kevin and his crew, they've got a great website, very easy to navigate. They've got all their products on there. You can buy their maple syrup by the bottle. You can buy it by the case. Uh, you can buy that sugar. Oh, my goodness, Mike. That stuff is so good. Uh, and they've got some other gift sets there, too. So you definitely want to check it out. Well, he's also going to be in some distilleries pretty shortly here. Um, some distilleries from that I love and I know you love. He's going to be down at Leaper's Fork. Um, you can find a syrup down there aged in their barrels. Treaty Oak down in Dripping Spring, Texas. Um, I was just out there. His syrup's going to be there. Awesome. Um, and in Garrison Brothers in Texas, if you think uh, you love some maple syrup, make sure you go into Garrison Brothers and pick up a bottle from them also. Uh, Kevin, appreciate it. Uh, I know he, he loves people. You're supporting a local farmer, a local product, a small family. This is no factory place that's putting out maple syrup, right, Jim? This is a good man doing good work. Yeah, got to love it. Well, make sure you check out his site. Like Jim said, seldomseenmaple.com. Pick up a bottle today. All right, so we are back. We've been sipping on this 15-year Calumet farm. Any last notes on it, Mike? Yeah, it's just it, it's just a solid old school bourbon to me. You like it better than the fourteen? I do. Me too. And I, I think because when I think of Kentucky gentlemen, Kentucky colonels drinking bourbon, I think this is what they'd probably be sipping on. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think there's been a number of uh, Kentucky gentlemen in the past who've probably had some old crow back from the 1800s. You think it was 15 years old, though? Uh, I doubt it. But I bet they sipped on it just the same. Now, when do you think bourbon, you know, back then, when did, when was the period where they said, okay, we're going to try this older stuff? I think, I'll be honest with you, I think that it was pretty common for whiskey to be sold out by the time it was four years old. I think so, too. Because they were going through some serious volumes of whiskey in the 1800. We have no clue. We've talked about this in past yeah. years, the volume of whiskey that was being consumed in the United States in the 1800s far outweighs what's being drunk today. I, I think after prohibition, now there's bottles out there. that says eight, 10 years old, right? Sure. Sure. Um, but I don't think the volume I think the twenties, I think in the twenties, probably a lot of that stuff became a thing because whiskey started to age, right? During Prohibition, mm -hmm. and people were getting their hands on some aged whiskey, and they're like, whoa, 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 this stuff's been hidden away in a cellar in Chicago for <laughs> four or five years, and man, this is good stuff. Whiskey keeps getting better. What about the whiskey that was like from Nelson Greenbrier that got shipped down to Mexico? Yeah. What did that do to that whiskey? I'm sure it, it just it compounded it, right? Because when, when it hit that hotter climate, we know what happens in Texas. Yeah. What do you think happened in Mexico? I, 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 never, I never thought about that. When yeah. we were down there, Nelson Greenbrier talking about that, uh, you know, older whiskey, and then you ship it down to Mexico in hot rail cars. It couldn't have lasted that long down there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think it did. I think they turned around, bottled it, and shipped it back to the U.S., on the black market. On the black market, yeah. Yeah, it didn't last very long at all. Dang, Coasty's out there trying to confiscate it, bust, <laughs> bust it open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad bottle. Like I said, I, I think 15 years is uh, what a Kentucky gentleman needs to be drinking. If you want to try to find yourself one of these, like I said, you can pick them up at Kroger right now for about 130 bucks, I think. Yeah, so we got the, just to sort of recap, Today's show, is we're drinking through the Calumet Farms 14, 15, and 16-year-old bourbons. We've got the 15-year-old in our glass right now. In the first half, we had the 14. Uh, we're kind of 
feeling it, at least at the moment, like we like the 15 just a little bit better. It could be due to the extra year on age on the barrels, or it could be a little bit due to the extra proof because they released this one around 105 proof versus, what was it, 94? Yeah. Yeah. 94 ish on the first one. So next on our list. The old 16 year. The 16 year. Now we had this on a recent show. We're not going to, spoiler alert, we're not going to tell you what we said on that recent show. If you want to go back and listen to it, you're welcome to. Otherwise, sit tight. We're drinking again. And so, you know, these barrels, just again, another recap. These barrels likely came out of the Barton Distillery, 1792 Distillery in Bardstown, roughly around the age of 11 to 11 and a half years of age. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and they entered into storage at Western Spirits. Western Spirits put out a number of years of expressions of the Calumet Farms whiskey. We happen to have the 14, the 15, and the 16 on hand now. We've tasted through the 14 and 15. we got the 16 in our glass right now. And I'm going to say that the color hasn't changed much between the three years. Pretty much the same. So I'm thinking that the barrel gave up what charcoal color it was going to give up in that first 14 years. If there's a difference, I can't tell. Yeah. You know, like you said, it it probably stopped the coloration at some point. And I, I've heard people say that the first three or four years is the color you're going to get is the color you're going to get. I don't know if that's always true, but, you know, I've seen some stuff down in Texas that two years old and it's dark. Yeah. Black tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, this is a, uh, we just drank this not too long ago. Heck, let's try it, Jim. Cheers. Cheers. On the nose, I'm telling you right now, I'm getting a little more bite. Definitely a little more oak on it. I'll tell you on a palate, it is a lot more oak. Yeah, it's it's bitterness factor has gone up quite a bit. It's a lot more drying. It's lost some of those uh, dark fruit notes. They're gone now. Definitely, there's no sweetness on this at all. You think so? I still I still get that. Are you getting a little bit? I still get that. <laughs> I get that sweet Dr. Pepper, almost a Dr. Pepper that maybe set out in the sun and the fizz is gone, you know, the carbonation. Yeah. And it's kind of turned syrupy. Um, Are you still getting the peanuts in it? Yep. 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 For me, this is not, this doesn't punch my ticket. Yeah. You have to really, really like old bourbons. Yeah. Um, It's amazing that it changed so much between 15 and 16. Now, 14, I think was good. 15 was better and 16 is over the top Mm -hmm. and this is 106 proof so this is very similar to the 15 it's just a year older yeah it's uh it's still good bourbon though yeah um don't get us wrong listeners if you like you gotta like older bourbons i I gotta keep saying that you know you gotta like that oakiness smokiness you gotta like that that drying factor of an older bourbon uh, some people can't appreciate. It. I can appreciate this bottle, uh, just not my super jam, right? Yeah, I don't. Honestly, I don't see how the Calumet Farm Seventeen is going to be better. I guess it could be in some way. It could go a direction that I'm not expecting. If there's no sugar left in that barrel. <clears throat> Then and if you're not rotating that barrel around, you know, it's just sitting there in one spot and there's not that much because how many, how many, uh, bottles are you going to get out of barrel? It's 16 or 17. Right. Years. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, they're kind of tight lipped down there at Western, so I don't think we'll hear too much out of them about what their plans are. We probably got to reach out, but my guess is they're not going to let us know. Probably not. <laughs> uh, they've, they've kind of got their plan in place and how they're going to put out these barrels a little bit at a time. I don't know whether they have a lot of them left or just a few of them left or none of them left for that matter. But I'm going to say if there's a 17 year old, it's probably going to be too far gone for me. Yeah. I would be hard pressed to buy one just because I think it's going to be like overly oaky. Yeah. 
I grab an oak stick and chew on it. Yeah. Well, they're beautiful bottles. What a great collection to have, to have the whole series. Yeah. I mean, each one represents a horse that was uh, prominent in horse racing, thoroughbred horse racing. Yeah, that, that Calumet Farms is definitely, uh, they're the top of their game when it comes to horse racing. Yeah. Mike, I really enjoyed going through these three bottles. I think we've probably revealed to ourselves exactly what we thought is that the, the, the bourbon progressed in a way that just put it to a point where it's kind of not in our wheelhouse anymore. Well, let's, let's see if their new eight-year-old is in our wheelhouse. Let's do that. Let's try the eight-year-old. Yeah, let's now. do that real fast. All right, Mike, I think this is kind of a nice twist on things for us to go from the 14 to 15 to 16, sort of talk about what we think, how that aging process went, and then to just throw that all the wind and jump back to eight years. Yeah, you know, Jimmy Russell, he always says eight to 10 years, a sweet spot, right? Absolutely. So we're we're looking at a bottle here. It's kind of the red label. This is the Calumet Farm. Eight-year Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Same mash bill. What was that mash bill, Mike? 74, 18. 18 and 8. And 8. Yeah. 74, 18, and 8. Still a, a rye bourbon mash bill. Definitely uh, a mash bill that matches that uh, Barton 1792 mash bill. Now, whether or not this is out of Barton or not, I can't say. But uh, you know what? I mean, it's one thing's for sure. We're dealing with the same, roughly the same mash bill whiskey. Yeah, except for this bottle you can get for $41. This is a $41 bottle, and $41 for an eight-year-old bourbon is not a bad deal. No, not, it was on sale at Kroger, so I think it was 53 normal or something like okay. that. So, But still, you know, that's a, that's a good price. But this is 90 proof, so we're back down to the 90 proof range. Unfortunately, we are. Yeah. Well, let's let's try this. Thing. Let's check it out. Man, it's very similar though on the nose, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, it's almost like we're dealing with the same whiskey. Might be. Then this is fifty barrels of this. Eight this is old. a fifty barrel small batch. Got a picture of Calumet Farm on the front label, and they call this the Pedigree. Oh, much more sweetness there. Still got that pepper though, right? It does. It still has that pepper, but that fruit has lightened up just a little bit. It's a little bit more of a red fruit, but the oak is still ever present. At eight years, it's still got a good amount of oak on it. Yeah, you, you, I think you hit the nail on the front. That that fruit's right up front. Um, it's still got that white pepper, woody taste on the back end, though. Um, you know that pepper is still there. The nuttiness is still there for me. It it is it is a nutty bourbon, no doubt. It's definitely got that peanutty flavor to it, and I kind of like that. This is like getting a fresh Dr Pepper right here. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, the, for me, this doesn't necessarily taste like a like a seven. Well, a typical Barton seventeen ninety two whiskey is going to be around seven years old. It does not remind me of that. It's a little different. Yeah, you know, maybe it's just how they proof it down and the water they're using. And, you know, we don't know where they're proofing it down at. Yep. So Three Rivers, Western Spirits out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. They're doing the Calumet Farm Series. And uh, this eight year is definitely a departure from the 14, 15, and 16 that we just tried. But you can definitely tell it's in the same family without a doubt. It's nice. It's uh, this is a good bourbon. Right it's here. not as drying. Yeah, I think is you know you get into those tannics of of the oak um, in those later years, especially in that sixteen year old. I think it was loaded with oak. Where this is not so much. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is almost almost on the verge of sessionable. I think I could sit down with you and we could sit down by the fire and we could probably go through. The bottle. <laughs> Probably the whole bottle. Yeah. Yeah. 
It'd be some long conversations, a lot of lies told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh a lot of good stories, a lot of good memories. Um, you know, we're talking about whiskey sessions, share a bottle with a friend like this right here. Uh that's what it's all about, that whiskey community. The more people you can share with, obviously, uh, the better it's gonna taste. Isn't that right? You know, you, you Jim, you you got a bunch of friends around. You start drinking whiskey and stuff, and it, the friends make it taste better sometimes. Absolutely. Now, Mike, I'm looking at this. They got a picture of the Calumet Farm Barn. Very iconic picture. But then the logo, the Calumet logo, is the little little thing on top of the barn. You remember the little, the spire? It's like a spire, but there's a name for that thing. Isn't that what it is? It's the spire. Don't think all oh, that thing on top of a barn a cupola. Is it a cupola? cupola so it's not a spire well no i mean i think it's fair to call it a spire because you know churchill downs calls it a spire but i i think it's you know for for us regular folks for us <laughs> folks that don't own racetracks i think we call them cupolas huh. i thought it was called a pergola but that that's something altogether different i think a, i don't even know what a pergola is pergolas say- those little uh those little uh patios with the little um like shade over them hmm. that you sit on. Well, anyway, that's their logo. It's got the little barn cupola on it. And uh, every bottle, minus the eight year, is dedicated to a horse and its tradition. I'll be honest with you. I really like this eight year. It's pretty tasty. It's a, it's a nice, tasty bottle. Again, Mashville 74, 18, and 8. Definitely. A Barton Mash Bill. Good stuff. Well, we thank you. We thank you. It's a Barton Mash Bill. We, you know, there's so much knowledge out there. Um, one of the websites, if you want to go to, talking about Mash Bills, um, and everybody uses them, Modern Thirst. Everybody knows that pretty much. If you're a new listener. Breaking Bourbon's another one, right? Yeah, Breaking Bourbon. Um, if you want to check out, make sure you do your homework before you step in that liquor store and uh, – Find out about the mash bill. If you already know what you kind of like, then that might help you out. If you know you're a Barton drinker, you want to pick up one of these bottles. Maybe you do a side by side of a Barton in this um, for yourself, um, or get your whole lineup. If you have a lineup, open those bottles and you know drink them. We've did that several times, Jim. We've did the all the Blantons. We've did um, all the Weller. Um, we've done some wild turkeys like yeah, that. I think you, you get creative. You have your friends over and you, you come up with a theme. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you're drinking through the Calumets. Maybe you're drinking through the Bartons. You know, um, maybe you have a blind bottle share like we've had in the past. It's always fun to have some friends over, mix it up a little bit, have everybody bring a bottle. You have a good time. Yeah. Well, Jim, another great show. I hope everybody enjoyed it. But where can everybody find us on uh, social media? Well, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. You can find us on all social medias. But probably the number one spot you'll find us is on our private Facebook group called the Bourbon Roadies. We've got about 3,000 loyal followers in there that are talking about bourbon, sharing bourbon, taking pictures of bourbon. And just chit-chatting all day long. It's a great place to hang out. It's a safe place to hang out. We don't allow any rudeness in there. We invite you to come in. If you're listening to this show, you're definitely invited to come join the Bourbon Roadies. Go on to Facebook, search the Bourbon Roadies. It'll come up. Join. It'll ask you three questions. Do you like bourbon? Do you agree to play nice? And most importantly, are you 21? Because we don't allow anybody in there that's not old enough to drink. If you can answer those three questions, you're in, you're a member. And when you come to our next event, you can belly up to the Bourbon Road Bar. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a lot of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do two shows a week. We do our review, sometimes of a big boy, but we try to stick to a craft bourbon. Um, that's usually 30 minutes. It'll get you to work. And then on Wednesdays, like today's episode, 45 minutes to an hour long, that should get you to work and home at least if you have a commute like I do. If you're like Jim, it won't even get you out to the horse barn. Um, 
Uh, so give us a listen. We'd appreciate it uh, to make sure you don't miss those episodes. Make sure you're scrolling up top of your app. You're listening to us right now. Hit that check sign, that plus sign, that subscribe sign. That app will let you know, hey, these jokers have a show come out today and you need to listen to it. Then you need to scroll on down, hit that five star review, leave us some comments. You know what's going to happen if you don't. The big bad booty daddy of bourbon is going to come to your house dragging all this extra aged Calumet Farms bourbon with him. Drink it all night long. By the end of the night, you're going to be seeing them horses circle round and round. But seriously, um, those reviews, those comments, they get us into distilleries. They get great whiskey in our hands. We'd really appreciate it. So my kind are very approachable. If you see us out and about, if you see us in town, if you see us at a at a bourbon bar, at a distillery, if you see us at a if you see us at a liquor store, make sure you walk up to us and introduce yourself. We'd love to meet you. If you got an idea for a show, if you got an idea for a bottle or a guest that should be on the bourbon road, we'd love to hear it. You can always reach out to us on our website at thebourbonroad.com. We got a contact us page. Fill it out, send it in. We'll get back to you. You can always send us an email. I'm Jim at thebourbonroad.com. He's Mike at thebourbonroad.com. But like we always say, probably the best way. Hit up our DMs on Instagram. I'm Jay Shannon 63. I'm Big Bourbon Chief. We'll see you down the Bourbon Road.